The skies are once again becoming a battlefield, not with missiles, but with choices. In a world where air superiority often defines the outcome of war, nations are facing a critical question. Stick with legacy partnerships or pivot to more independent paths? This question has reignited one of the most heated rivalries in modern military aviation, the Eurofighter Typhoon versus the F-35 Lightning II. But this isn't just about speed or stealth. It's about sovereignty, strategy, and the future of warfare. So, let's see how these two jets juxtaposed. The fighter jet rivalry between Europe and the United States is heating up again. At the center of the storm are two advanced combat aircraft, the Eurofighter Typhoon and the American-built F-35 Lightning II. As discussions intensify in both the United Kingdom and Canada over future aircraft acquisitions, these two jets are once again being compared not just for their capabilities, but for what they represent strategically and economically. In the United Kingdom, this debate is becoming more than just technical. While the Royal Air Force currently operates both platforms, the F-35B for carrier operations and the Typhoon for air dominance, concerns are emerging about over-reliance on U.S. technology. A growing chorus within Britain's defense community is advocating for strengthening the Eurofighter program, which was co-developed by the UK alongside Germany, Italy, and Spain. Critics argue that prioritizing the F-35 could jeopardize the UK's defense industrial base. There's a worry that overcommitting to American platforms may hurt the domestic arms industry and even undercut the future of the UK's sixth-generation fighter project, GCAP, the Global Combat Air Program. Additionally, the F-35's heavy reliance on proprietary software has sparked concerns about sovereignty, data sharing, and possible remote control capabilities, sometimes described as kill switch fears although no solid evidence of such features exists. Across the Atlantic, a similar shift appears to be unfolding in Canada. According to recent reporting by BulgarianMilitary.com, Ottawa is reconsidering its F-35 procurement plans amid escalating costs and political hesitations. Defense Minister Bill Blair has signaled that alternatives to the F-35 are now on the table including the Eurofighter Typhoon. This marks a potentially significant reversal for Canada, which had previously committed to purchasing the F-35A variant. Canada's doubts stem from several key issues. First, the F-35 program has proven to be one of the most expensive defense projects in history, with each aircraft costing tens of millions of dollars and substantial life cycle maintenance fees. Second, there's growing discomfort about becoming overly dependent on U.S. defense decisions, especially as political uncertainty in Washington has raised questions about long-term cooperation and technology sharing. So, what's really at stake here? Beyond national politics, the comparison between the Eurofighter Typhoon and the F-35 Lightning II comes down to fundamental differences in design philosophy, operational roles, and strategic priorities. Let's start with performance. The Eurofighter Typhoon was designed primarily for air superiority and excels in close-range combat. It's fast, capable of speeds over Mach 2, and extremely agile thanks to its canard delta wing design. This makes it ideal for dogfighting and intercept missions. Pilots often describe the Typhoon as a hot rod in the sky, responsive, aggressive, and tailored for dynamic aerial maneuvers. The F-35, on the other hand, is not built for speed or maneuverability. Its maximum speed is about Mach 1.6, and it sacrifices aerodynamic performance for stealth and electronics. It's a multi-role, fifth-generation fighter meant to operate in heavily contested airspace. What it lacks in agility, it makes up for with stealth technology, advanced sensors, and real-time data fusion. 
Simply put, the F-35 doesn't aim to dogfight. It aims to see the enemy first, fire first, and leave before it's seen. This edge is most apparent in the F-35's sensor suite. Equipped with the AN-APG-81 ASA radar, distributed aperture system, and electro-optical targeting system, the F-35 offers a 360-degree situational view to its pilot. These systems feed into a single integrated display, providing a kind of God's eye view of the battlefield. The Eurofighter, while still formidable, uses the Capto e ESA radar and the Pirate Infrared Search and Track System. These are powerful tools, but they don't offer the same level of integrated sensor fusion. When it comes to weapons, both aircraft are highly versatile. The Typhoon carries a wide array of European and NATO standard missiles, including the Meteor air-to-air -air missile, Storm Shadow cruise missile, and Brimstone anti-armor missile. The F-35 supports U.S. standard ordnance, such as the AIM-120 Amram, and various precision-guided bombs. However, the F-35 has an edge in stealth munitions delivery, being able to carry weapons internally without compromising its radar profile, something the Typhoon cannot do. Then there's the question of cost. The Typhoon is generally less expensive up front, particularly for European nations that are part of the program and can benefit from local production. However, its maintenance costs can be high, especially for countries lacking an established support infrastructure. The F-35's operating cost has been a major criticism. Even though Lockheed Martin insists that costs are coming down with scale, many nations, including the US itself, have struggled with the jet's long-term affordability and availability rates. Strategically, the choice between the two aircraft often reflects broader defense and geopolitical goals. The F-35 represents deep integration into the US-led defense network. For NATO allies, this means easy interoperability, shared tactics, and access to joint training and logistics. Choosing the Eurofighter, by contrast, signals a preference for European industrial collaboration and strategic autonomy. For the UK, leaning toward the Eurofighter reinforces national sovereignty and bolsters local manufacturing. For Canada, exploring alternatives to the F-35 could signal a pivot toward more independent defense procurement and a more balanced partnership with European allies. In the end, there's no universally better jet the Eurofighter Typhoon and the F-35 serve different missions and reflect different priorities. If the goal is to dominate in close-range combat and support local industry, the Typhoon is a strong candidate. But if stealth, networked warfare, and global interoperability are critical, the F-35 remains unmatched. One thing is clear. This isn't just a competition between jets. It's a competition between visions. And as countries like the UK and Canada weigh their options, the world will be watching closely to see which path they choose through the clouds of modern warfare. So, what do you think? Which will hold the future battle? Share your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for watching.